Hello and welcome to the Rapid Power podcast where we ask power addicts some power platform and some non power platform questions. Now, let's get started. Hello and welcome to episode number 3 of Rapid Power podcast. Uh, I'm Vivek Bavishi, aka that API guy. Uh, and today I have two of my good friends on my podcast, uh, Sandy Usia and Ed Gonzalez. Thank you for joining, guys. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for Super us. excited. Uh, so, Sandy, uh, you are a c- co-founder at Enlightening, and uh, you are a technical evangelist at uh, uh, Enlightening, Enlightening Tools. Enlightening Tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sister companies. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, and Ed Gonzalez, um, he's a business applications MVP and MCT. So, yep. good stuff. Yeah. A lot of good stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, let's get started. Um, we're going to do three Power Platform questions, three not so Power Platform questions, and there might be a bit of a surprise in the end. So, Wait, what? Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the surprise might be me hanging up early. We'll find out. <laughs> surprise, I'm it'll out. Be a, it will be an actual rapid fire question rather than oh, uh, us preparing for our questions. Take the fifth, but Sandy. It won't be anything crazy. Uh, so yeah, let let me start off. And uh, the first thing, uh, so what is one of the apps or flows made by a power addict uh, that you were really amazed by? Like, wow, this is amazing. So Sandy, which one is? It for you? Uh, well, so when I was thinking about that question, I forgot about the clause that said power by a power addict. <laughs> I mean, anyone. Uh, Yeah, and and so the one that I was thinking of, not so much that I was amazed by, although maybe I was at the time, but I would say it has influenced me a good bit, was um, several years ago when I first saw Greg Lindhorst uh, with Microsoft (laughs) demo. um, He was demoing expressions and things in Power Apps, but in a Power App and using a Power App as his slides. And then with the live demo being right in the slides, so to speak. And now that's what I do all the time. (laughs) I mean, ever since then, that's what I've done in my demos and things that I do for um, SharePoint Saturday or Microsoft 365 Saturdays and things like that is um, use the Power App as my PowerPoint, so to speak. And yeah. That's cool. So, so that really impressed me a lot at the time. Nice. How about you, Ed? So, um, my favorite right now is the stuff that Brian Dang is showing with his isometric video game stuff. Um, not so much because of the technology, right? But it's showing kind of what's possible and some of the cool things you can do. Because there aren't, a, I mean, no offense, but there's not a ton of like business use cases for, hey, how do I build this video game in? Um, you know, in my work environment, but it showcases the technology and it makes it attractive to new people. And I think that's his intent is to really kind of show this thing does a lot, you know, it does more than you think it will. And so uh, I like that. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. And actually, well, that's I mean, kind of what he's always done too, even yeah. before he was yeah. with Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. a great, great evangelist and and super awesome at at this stuff and just super down to earth. You know, just you can talk to him like a, a nice, normal. Like I'm not a developer. What did you just do? You know, and and yeah. breaks it down into to great little things. So it's awesome. Yeah, and actually, you learn a lot of things which you could apply in the business world. Then mm-hmm. when oh, you're absolutely. Making a game, so. Yeah, I yeah. think I think the video game stuff just kind of became a thing and, and it's a, definitely an interest and, and it's I mean, I do a lot of, you know, a lot of non business things in power automate because that's how I learn, you know, and that's how mm-hmm. you get, it's the thing that keeps you interested. And um, like I said, I like this stuff because it gets other people's interest, maybe even people that aren't in tech. And that's kind of a, a soapbox of mine is bringing folks from non tech into tech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I mean, can I (laughs) interject? That made me think of um, uh, one couple years ago, I guess, at the uh, Power Platform World Tour in um, Amsterdam. And we were in a hotel bar and Brian Dang and Rory Neary were talking about some kind of game in Power Apps. And 
like Rory had a question or something and Brian's like, oh, let's do that right now. So yeah. right there, and then they were just putting together in this really cool app. <laughs> no, that's crazy. That's exactly how he is. Like I had, I was talking to him about like this, this tool I wanted to build for, you know, fostering kittens, you know, we have kittens coming in and going out and I want to, you know, keep track of everything. He's like, let's do this right now. And so we're sketching things out and doing it. And I had no idea that like it became static after a certain point. Cause I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but it, uh, the enthusiasm was there and it's still a project yeah. of mine. I guess that's a common theme for Brian. He, he has done the same thing with me as well. That right. Let's do this. Let's build it now. <laughs> and I guess I missed that about uh, even conferences where you can, where you just you can around. attend the sessions, but plus you can do all this great stuff. Yeah. yeah. So sometime soon. Let's hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it's been, uh, so I, the one app that I was like really amazed by was uh, by Sancho Harker, mm. who is a business applications MVP from UK. And he made this uh, theming power mm. app and it just blew my mind. He has probably spent hours and hours building that kind of JSON behind it so that you basically you build, when you insert a label, it defaults to a type of font, default color and all that kind of stuff. And you can make all those changes in that kind of one place. And after that, if whenever you insert a label or a button or anything, it takes what you have defined uh, rather than it defaulting it by itself to some random thing. So I asked him how many hours he has spent. I have asked him this question again and again. He has never answered. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's a lot of hours. So it's it's a lot of hard work put into that one app, which uh, was really amazing. Yeah. yeah, that was actually going to be my second choice. <laughs> uh -huh. I have to prepare for uh, like two, three uh, uh, contingencies because this same thing happened when in the previous episode, uh, John made some answer on one question and I was like, oh, that was mine. And Gita made some answer. I was like, oh, that was also the second thing I thought about. So always have contingencies. That wasn't in the liner notes, man. I only have one answer for I each should, question. Yeah, I should, yeah, I should add that from the I next I have time. multiple <laughs> answers for each question. Although I'm sure we would each have our different takes on it. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. I have this weird thing. I always get teased because when I go to a restaurant and somebody like you're in a group and somebody orders something like if I was going to order that thing, I have to order something else. And so it's mm. the same kind of thing. Got to have a backup. Always, always, always. <laughs> so any more question do you have for us? Oh, uh, yeah. My question is, uh, what if I can read it again? <laughs> um, the naming conventions. Yeah. I found it. Uh, what are your personal naming conventions for Power Automate flows and actions? So what helps your future self find flows and remember what they do? Who answers this one first? Me? Ed, Ed, All right. Yeah. So um, naming conventions, and I'm going to do a couple, I'm going to plug something a couple of times just because it falls into these pretty well. Um, but I've been preceding my uh, flows with dev, test, or prod. Uh, to kind of help me keep track of where they're at in the process and how much attention I need to pay to them. Um, and just because some of the clients that I have, they have limited environments, so we don't have all three. So maybe I'll have dev and test in one environment and then production in the other. Um, and then the other thing that I was doing, I saw this at a conference in Portland. And if this was your session, please reach out to me because I've been um, talking about it a lot lately which is uh, where I'll put a compose at the very top of every flow and that's my release notes. And so mm -hmm. as I'm making updates, I go in there and, and, you know, put what I just did, the date and things like that. And then um, that way, when I come in later, I know, or somebody else can come in later and they know exactly what happened. Oh, that's nice. That's I hadn't heard cool. that one before. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, I guess I, I do some of these things, which add, said plus uh or i guess i do, do i have the flexibility of environment so i was doing that dev test prod earlier and i was like okay i need to start using environments more now different environments for doing different things this i is like don't, one and a half two years back i totally forgot the plug too the the whole thing i was going to plug was john lou's uh mm. flow studio because oh, he yeah. lets you tag all of the the flows mm. with stuff mm. and so i'll use that a lot any any client where i've got you know hundreds or or even more than 50 flows i'll, I'll use mm -hmm. those tags to kind of do that and you can easily see what connectors there are so yeah that's he'll true. come up again yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So uh, I generally, I, so I have to work with a lot of business groups. So we, I just basically put the business group first in the title of the flow, followed by uh, mainly I'm working on this kind of CDS or data world stuff. So I put the entity, which is the kind of the main entity um, for that or main table. And then I write something about the flow, like the basic thing is that that's doing. I did use the compose thing in one of the, uh, like just after the first trigger, I add compose and write some things over there. Uh, but otherwise, I I guess I, I just use the details of the, the flow. I mean, I know it's something which very less is being used, but flow has a description area, right? Yeah, which so you could use as well. So I had thought about that, and the reason I, I like the compose, and I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other, is because <laughs> when you're making the changes, you're in the flow itself, yeah, right? So yeah, the compose right. is right there. If you want to change the description, you got to bounce out, Go do an edit. And, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. it's it's just easier to have that there in my head. It, maybe maybe I can automate writing whatever the update is to the description. I'm not there yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. And I guess the other thing which I do is every action that I add, I let the action name be there and then add a hyphen and then describe because that way I know, like if it's like send an email V2, mm -hmm. I know that it was a send an email V2 rather than I, I type it, okay, send email to XYZ for this. Yeah. Uh, otherwise I forget which version of this action or within Teams, you don't know. There are so many adaptive card actions. Mm -hmm. So it's, so I try to keep what comes with the action and then add a hyphen and then describe. So when, I mean, I have questions because how long are your flow names then right. when you've got like the business name and then the guy's name and then the. That's the flow color. name. I'm talking about the actions here. Right. But then on the yeah. action side, like let's say your action has to go get an array and then later you're using that action name in, in a function, right. Or an expression. Mm -hmm. You have to type all that out. Or, no, I don't. I mean, I just, I, I take it dynamically from the previous one. Oh, I but, yeah, but, that's, yeah. but that's why I, I kind of go the opposite way with yeah. renaming my actions. I make them as short as possible yeah. and still tell me what they're doing and take out yeah. all the spaces if I can yeah. to. I use camel case to just because just like I do with SharePoint list columns, just to get mm -hmm. rid of all the underlines and all that stuff in the future things. But I agree with your point about knowing in the future what, action it really was though yeah. so i'll often put that in a comment uh, oh that's a good idea i mean along with always expression you know whatever expressions are in there go into the comment as well if i had mm -hmm. one but but also if i feel like i need it what the original action was called because yeah that's important yeah mm -hmm. when you're just saying a bunch of sharepoint 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 or whatever. <laughs> right right I think I want to plug here though. Uh, I've seen the the best I've seen is uh, Eliza's flows. Well, where she puts all these num. I mean, I know yeah. she goes to yeah, the whole flow and then puts you, it. I'm yeah. like, that's what crazy. She, she, she has them all the, numbered. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Each action numbered and then 1.1 1 .1 or 1.2. Mm. Yeah, it looks very organized, but right. I don't yeah. know if I could do that because I'm always forever going back and adding yeah. things. My, build, my, my building style, right, um, is too sloppy for that. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I have room for that. <laughs> it sounds neat. It's not, it feeds my OCD. Yeah, it like, makes beautiful flows. Right. And like yeah. when she demos stuff, it looks so organized. For demos, I think it makes sense. And also, um, I try to add emojis when I'm putting it out for like people to download and mm -hmm. make some changes in the flow. So I put like a yellow or a, some dot to mm -hmm. show that, okay, this action, you need to go and change something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it will just follow the normal route and mm -hmm. you won't see things. That's so, cool. yeah. So emojis kind of pop out and show you, okay, yeah, you need to do something here. But, and how does that, I haven't tried, I haven't, I know you can do that, but I haven't done it. So how does that translate into the action name? Like, it, it, the, it takes the emoji thing and the action, the expressions as well. So it doesn't break anything. Mm. But what does it look like? Like what's it? It just oh, looks, like the, oh, yeah, oh. it looks like that emoji. I mean, basically a character, right? Uh, mm. but it shows it as that emoji. It mm. shows maybe some symbol, like a different symbol than the emoji itself. Mm. But it, it shows it. So, mm. yeah. 
But anyways, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. What question do you have, Ed? Oh, it's my turn. Okay, so aside, because we have rules with our questions, aside from product names or licensing, what's the one thing you would change or improve about Power Automate? So um, I thought about this and I, I I know the expression editor has, they keep saying it, you're working on it, it's gonna come out, there's some preview for it, but even the preview one, I don't like it that much. Yeah. I feel like I, almost, I, I want, or I guess I don't want expressions at all. I want them to get rid of expressions no. and have some mm -hmm. kind of actions to do things for everything. Everything, uh, everything? Yeah, but how, you've uh, got to be able to nest that? things. And... Yeah, I, I, I guess, or make it, I mean, some way to make most of the expressions available, like number formatting, right? They add that as a, an action. Yeah. Uh, but most of the things that let's cover it, but I guess, yeah, I understand for some things you might still need expressions, but the, the, the new thing that they were coming up with, I don't feel that's going to, that's going to mm. be sufficient. The one uh, that's in preview you, right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I feel not, like you I'm not I too spend a lot that. of time in expressions. Mm. <laughs> uh just making sure because sometimes you click on update it doesn't do thing the right thing you have to click update two three times or it's always f a bit finicky so I, I feel like if i can save a lot of time there uh, i can build my flows much more faster so mm. expressions mm. change something about it to make it much more efficient <laughs> So you think, I mean, if it did that thing that like, uh, was it Visual Studio does where it shows you all the parens that are open and closed, like make sure those that are paired up awesome. right. That yeah. would help people like me, you yeah, know, so um, but, but that wasn't my answer, by the way, Sandy, it, it was your turn. I was just augmenting <laughs> Vivex one. Uh, well, so you said we couldn't talk about product name, but can we talk about um, Vivex said that I didn't say that that was thing was, name. Yeah, 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 that's true. You said that. Um, because uh, I, I don't like those new names of types of flows. <laughs> that is, ah, well, okay. I might get used to it, talk about that. used to everything else, but like cloud flow, cloud, whatever flows. And I understand that, I guess the difference between, uh, that's not my answer though. I was just being. <laughs> <laughs> my, You're my sneaking answer, in two answers. That's good, I like that. You're my so answer pro is, um, I think uh, better error messaging. Um, I think I know it's a fine line, uh, and we struggle with that as a product company, as Lightning Tools too, to make error messages that um, help people who understand what they mean, but also are not scare overly scary or um, un incomprehensible <laughs> to people who don't know what they mean. And I feel like a lot of the flow errors, although I know they've tried to help more on the help stuff that comes up now with an error, but still, if I just yesterday, uh, somebody I was working with, they got a bad request error and it was just looks like something's bad, like they did something wrong, <laughs> but it wasn't really. I mean, it was easy enough for me to figure out what the error was, but not for them. They couldn't, they didn't know where to start looking and it just looked like gobbledygook to them. So, so some way of making those error messages more user friendly and maybe some kind of AI, which I guess is what they're kind of working on with that right hand help. Um, I haven't actually delved into that too much to see if they're giving useful help in those cases because I've just gone to the error message. But you know what I mean, where it's saying like community things and stuff like that, which is interesting. Oh, yeah. Didn't you post something about that? Just that, like it's actually a bot? They just added that new. So if you click on help on any of the actions, mm -hmm. it shows up a, an option to chat with the bot. But again, mm -hmm. it basically does the same thing. It mm -hmm. gets blogs, articles mm, mm. Uh, from the community portal, the forum. Mm. Well, anyway, that's my answer. Hmm. Better error messaging. I Okay, so I one of us, or maybe both of us, meaning Microsoft or myself, has gotten better at this over the last, I don't know, year or two, because when I first started oh, I agree with, with this stuff. It's better. Yeah, I mean, I I'd get an error message and I would just it, it was an anxiety attack. You know, I'd be under the desk just hiding, 
And, and now it, I can at least, uh, I mean, it takes you to the broken action, right? It, it shows you which one is, is causing you trouble and at least gets you in the neighborhood where I don't think it did that before. No. Um, and n the errors do usually, you know, most of the errors that I encounter with, you know, the stuff I'm doing at my level, they mean something. There's some kind of meaningful content there. They are intimidating though. And, and I think that's something that can be done better, um, where the language can shift a little bit, where we're either, you know, making a presumption on the audience by how complex the flow is, you know, are there a lot of expressions? Are there no expressions? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. And then maybe cater the messages to that's that technical spectrum based on the complexity of that flow, maybe the number of flows that user has. There's a lot of information at the fingertips mm -hmm. of the company. So if they did that, I think that'd be super cool too. Mm -hmm. Or maybe start out with a, a more user friendly error message and just have a details button. Oh, or like a log that, file, yeah. That, that we could, people like us could click on and get the actual details. That... And by us, she means Vivek and Sandy. I mean, <laughs> I mean. Well, no, don't you feel like from the time that you first started, some of that, look it looking better, is probably you getting better. Yeah, I, I, and that's why I said one of us is is or both of us is getting better at this. And in mm. and, and I mean for people that are new at this, don't I mean don't be scared of it. Just you know think of it as one piece of paper in a stack of papers, and you just you know you deal with one paper at a time. You start dealing with one error at a time and, mm. and figuring it out, and pretty soon you get a hang for oh I know what this one is, and then that way you can move on to the next one. So that that's wasn't my in. answer. Oh, Let's okay. plug in Ed's session okay. there because he, he, I'm pretty sure there's a recording of Ed's session where he talks about the top 10 tips to yeah. kind of start the troubleshooting mm -hmm. tips on Power Automate. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's a really good, uh, like for somebody who's starting, I think some of the most common errors, you just get like, what do I do here? And I know Ed got it pretty well. So. Let's plug yeah. it in. <laughs> there, yeah, there was some, thank you. There was some JSON stuff that really scared the heck out of me when I first started. And now it's a little, little more familiar. You know, I'm not at, at a, you know, a developer level yet, but at least I'm not intimidated. I'll at least yeah. get into the fight without, you know, without being scared. So, yeah. Yeah. okay. So that wasn't my, my answer right. either. That was me gotcha. augmenting Sandy's question or Sandy's answer. Um, so my thing, I'd love to see some kind of folder structure in the my flows area. Oh yeah. Um, and this is my second plug for flow studio, because again, <laughs> it lets you organize stuff. Um, it just, you know, it would be intuitive. It would be nice. And there are some other products out there doing the same kind of stuff that allow us to sort of organize things and not necessarily just have this big jumble where, you know, the most recent used or whatever is up at the top. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so just giving the users the ability to sort of move things around and having a global search, cause I will forget where I put it and I understand that. Um, but I'm sure there's, you know, we've, we've got some kind of technology that lets us do a search and says, oh, look in this folder, so, you know, it's probably there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I totally agree with search. Sometimes it doesn't even to the oh, search on the top right. It doesn't give you the flow. I know. Like once, uh, I'm like, like, I know that actually is in the name, and <laughs> right. or I have to click see more or something. And, right. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's a good one. Thanks. All right. So uh, now that we've covered the three power platform topics, let's uh, jump on to non-technical stuff. So I'll start off. It's the new year. Um, so. <laughs> What's your philosophy around? Do you have new res resolutions or do you have like a list of goals that you want to achieve in the year? Um, or you have a totally different approach or you just let it flow? <laughs> <laughs> Who's first? Sam, you said, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I'm, I'm sort of a let it flow kind of a person <laughs> in general, but I do have goals that I'm working toward throughout the year and resetting fairly frequently actually or like trying to restart working on them so so the start of a new calendar year isn't necessary for me I don't feel like it's necessarily different from 
whatever other random start dates I have for my for trying to, to get things achieved. I, I tried this year doing, and I guess I've done this before, kind of a prior year review and see like what did I enjoy last year or what bothered me last year and try and do more of the things I enjoyed and less of the things that I didn't. <laughs> um, and just, but that's kind of amorphous, I guess. <laughs> Not so I have to, I mean, that's how it goes, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people just say that they're doing it. Yeah, and last year doesn't really count actually, anyway. Right. <laughs> right, is that right. least honest, right? Yeah. We just, we look back at 2019 and compare that to 2021 instead. <laughs> We're just going to pretend like it didn't happen. So I have to change my answer because Sandy pretty much took it. So yeah. I'll just say what she said. Um, not really, like, I, I, I don't do resolutions. Um, and I don't know if I, I do have goals, you know, things that I want to get done. I, and like Sandy, I don't always assign dates to them. And if I do, they're moderately arbitrary. Um, but I do every day try and move the game piece, right? And, and get a little something done on each of the things, um, you know, whether it's building the empire or, you know, mentoring or whatever, you know, you just, you know, day job stuff, like you're always trying to do something. Um, and then there's the last minute, you know, oh yeah, I set this goal and it's actually due tomorrow. So let's get, <laughs> let's get it going. Oh, that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, for me, it's, uh, so I started doing goals last year. I published it on a blog post and everything. Of course, I didn't meet all of those. Uh, but some of them, at least I started this podcast. That was one of the goals. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think at least that helped me to have a list. And then at least I can roll it over now <laughs> to this year and kind of keep building on that. And so I think the goal thing at least helped me. I don't have dates on it as well. Uh, but I want to try to become more like to try to schedule time for everything because I feel like you have a list of things that you want to do, but you don't schedule time for it. Um, and you just say that, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do this. And mm. It doesn't happen. I think I want to get better at scheduling time for doing things that I actually want to achieve personally, not, mm. not the professional stuff. Yeah. Yeah, along those lines, uh, did, have you read the book Indistractable? Indistractable by Nir Eyal. I know. I haven't, but I'm going to write it down. Anyway, it's very good. Um, and so I've been doing that for probably the past year or more. I think I first mm -hmm. read it on my way back from Ignite, come to think of it. And um, so it has to do with time boxing and scheduling yourself time, making sure you schedule yourself time for the things that are important to you just in blocks kind of. And like, if, think of what percent of your time do you want? Ideally, do you want to spend doing certain things and, um, and then putting that actually on your calendar? And so I've been doing that since then. And so, and then kind of refined that a bit. So like, I've got things that only I can do really like strategic thinking kinds of things and stuff like that, that uh, is important. So I've got that on my calendar every day to do at least some block of time for that. And then, and I mean, and things come up and stuff like that, but it's really been helpful for me anyway, to make sure that some of those pieces get moved, as you say, Ed, right. <laughs> sometime, and everything doesn't just fall by the wayside because of fires burning and stuff. Right. We, we, we confuse what's urgent with what's uh -huh. important. Uh -huh. Yeah, true. All right, Sandy, what question do you have? Um, my question was, what is your current favorite weekend pastime? And I so, said current because it could be, you know, different when it's not in a pandemic. <laughs> right. Um, and and so on that, I, I maybe I'm the only one. My like my I don't have weekends, you know, like they just mm. kind of bleed into one day bleeds into the next. Mm. Um, and so I don't have a total delineation between, you know, well, Saturday leisure, and Sunday. Then. Let's call right. it leisure. Right. And so so when um when I think about that, like, I'm really liking what I'm doing right now. You know what I mean? So like during the week and, um, you know, I, I finish up my ro regular day jobby stuff and then I start doing the power platform stuff and evangelizing and blogging and answering people's questions and, and mentoring and teaching and stuff. Like I'm so excited about that stuff. It, I often find myself doing a lot of that over the weekend. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's kind of different is just bought a house. And so, 
usually on those days I'm doing more of the, uh, you know, f- projects around the house type stuff. And that's pretty fulfilling. And I also try and stay home a lot more on the weekends because, um, you know, people are spending more time out on those days and mm. I don't I, I want to hang out at home. I want to be a hermit for a little <laughs> bit, you know, a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for us, it, uh, for us, it's been board games. So we've been uh, playing. Uh, so recently, we got we we went to Chicago um, just to meet. Like basically, we drove from our home to their home and just came back. <laughs> Didn't do anything else. But uh, we played some board games over there, and and it's always good to play with more people. Yeah. Uh, these board games. But yeah, we we enjoy doing that. So even within the two of us, sometimes we are playing like to, i think recently we we're playing azul which is i don't know if you have guys played mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. pretty pretty interesting one what, what so, kind of a game is that it's i don't know how it, what genre that falls like into strategy but of it's kind. a strategy a yeah, strategy game yeah so okay. yeah so board games apart from netflix and Hulu and all right. that kind of stuff. <laughs> right <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well my favorite is hiking I, yeah I like see a to, lot of that. I really like to get out into the woods, and luckily I'm in an area that has lots of that. <laughs> uh, we were just planning today what we're going to hike tomorrow. I mean, it's rainy season, but I think it's not supposed to rain tomorrow. So uh, we're going to do, um, I think, a prairie into a redwood forest kind of a hike. So, yeah, I, I love being in the woods. So you plan out, like, different ecological zones, <laughs> Sounds like we're going to today, we're going to do marshland. Uh, well, it's kind of, yeah, usually not quite that much, but uh, uh, usually it's always between beach and fo- beach or forest because there yes. are trails along the beaches too. And uh, uh, yeah, that's really cool. That's mm-hmm. really cool. And there's so, nobody out there here. Here it's yeah. so empty. Nice. So, Ed, for your question, I want you to read the first part of it take a pause and then read the second part <laughs> and see how it sounds yeah i listen man i know i know I i'm really just know. kidding yeah uh, so um i was trying to find a question that wasn't the typical right that wasn't you know that kind of got you outside of the you know what are your you know what are your top five favorite movies or you know stuff like that the, the cocktail party stuff you guys did a great job. Um, and so I, and I knew it was going to have like a, a high bar to match. Right. <laughs> so with all that build up, thanks Vivek. Um, my question was, what's your favorite smell? What, and what memory does it remind you of? Sorry, grammar people, but that's how I <laughs> ended my sentence. Um, and, and the reason that came to mind was because the old factory is like one of those strongest connections, right. To memories. And so I'm curious, to hear from both of you, you know, when you when you have that thing, where does it take you instantaneously, mm. right? Yeah, no, it, it was a good question. Actually, we I talked about this to my wife and we both discussed what's our favorite smell. And mm. I mean, it brings back some good memories as well. So so for me, it's uh, uh, so in India, it's the like there's a monsoon season, right? So yeah. it doesn't just rain throughout the year. It, it onsets around July time frame. Um, so the smell of the soil for the first rain, um, I, I mean, you don't smell it here in US anywhere. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that smell, that kind of is, I think that's my favorite smell. And mm. because it reminds me of, um, I used to visit my grandma's home yeah. every year in the summer. Uh, and this home, uh, this is in the state of Gujarat in India, where rain doesn't happen very often. I mean, people are waiting for rain to happen, uh, all the farmers and everything. So it's 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 scarce. So people are really excited about it. So uh, there, we had like a courtyard there. So the first rain, it's like, it's the first rain. We have to like get wet into this. And so you have, I mean, I have that memory of like some of my friends from uh, nearby, they'll come and we'll just play in the rain and all that stuff. So. I think that's that's my favorite smell, and that's what it reminds me of. And and did you? I mean, did you enjoy that exercise, sort of going back and reliving those memories and thinking about it? Because you said it doesn't happen here in the U.S., so you have nothing to draw you back to that moment. So 
Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something which, I mean, so for me, going to my grandma's home itself was a big kind of enjoyment because yes. it was a different place. Um, and I mean, of course, everyone likes their grandmas. <laughs> right. You know, they, they, they spoil you. So yeah, it, it was that plus just being in that place. Um, I, I just enjoyed being at my grandma's home that much. So yeah, yeah. I, I, that kind of associated with the mm. smell as well. That's mm. really cool. What about you, Sandy? Uh, actually, a little similar. Um, I was thinking the smell of woods. <laughs> yeah. And um, and but as you were talking, Vivek, I was thinking, well, why exactly? I mean, I've spent a lot of time in the woods. We go back. We used to go backpacking a lot, but but actually further back than that because my family home was in. a pretty big wooded property and my sisters and I just spent all day every day in the woods in the summertime playing like our Barbie dolls we didn't our Barbie dolls went on adventures in the creek <laughs> and <laughs> to whitewater rafting and things nice. in, in the woods and um so maybe it's partly that that I've just I'm just I love just being there and, and, and all of the woods smell different too. Like, I mean, obvious. So that was Western Pennsylvania woods. Right. Um, but here the redwood forests smell completely different, but still it's a forest smell. And, and when my, um, interestingly, when my son had spent uh, a year in New Zealand and came back and went for a hike with us in the Western Pennsylvania woods. And he's like, this smells completely different from, <laughs> from woods that look kind of similar but it's just yeah so that's interesting too so i guess specifically western pennsylvania woods <laughs> wow. that's really nice. cool it's funny to me because both of your answers were very earthy and mm -hmm. very natural right mine's the complete opposite completely chemical um i was so I used to do, and you know, we'll eventually get back into doing Krav Maga, which is kind of like a martial art. And every now and then, like I'd spar with this person and I'd get this, like, not necessarily a memory, but a feeling, right. Of being, being transported, if you will, back in time to, you know, I'm four or five years old and just feeling kind of safe and warm and stuff like that. And it, every, like, it took about two, three times to really nail this down where I'm trying to figure out what is that smell? What is it? You know, what at first it took me a bit to figure out what that it was a smell that was causing this. And two, to narrow down what the smell was. And I don't know what what application they were using, but it it was Mr. Bubbles, the the you know, the bubble bath <laughs> smell. And and so that would like whatever they had, like a perfume or whatever was mm. whatever they were wearing, reminded me of Mr. Bubbles. Took me back to being, you know, three, four, five years old in the bathtub, warm <laughs> water, you know, bubbles everywhere, little hair in a mohawk or whatever, you know, whatever we did as a kid. And it was just so odd to me that that it. I mean, it was instantaneous almost. Huh. Just like the moment I went in and and got close enough to smell that, I was like. I'm I'm back in that moment and I didn't know why and that's why that always kind of sticks with me you know huh. so maybe. do you still take bubble baths oh maybe that's it yeah yeah not, a TMI Sandy well, that's a that's a different <laughs> podcast uh, this I mean I, I, this was a really good question though and I mean definitely yeah. took us back to our memories and uh, so, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> it's it's fun to go back to those places every now and mm. then even if you don't get the reminders from the scent mm. yeah so, you know, have somebody send you some earth and water it, you know, from India or something, and then that way you can at least get a piece of it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So time for a bonus question. Ah, uh, uh, no. So got to go, time's up. As we are recording on a Friday, um, what's your go-to drink, Sandy? Oh, gin and tonic, uh, specifically Hendrix and... Um, um, fever tree tonic. Fever tree? Mm -hmm. Fever tree. Is that yes. what I say? Okay. Yes. yes. And, and I'm, I'm tonic ignorant. Like gin, I know, is juniper berries, right? Mm -hmm. Among other things. Yeah, lots of what, different things. What, but. what makes a tonic, like one tonic, better than the other? Uh, well, a tonic is quinine, but, or quinine, or however you pronounce that. Right. But, um, but is that what they I use like, for malaria? What is yeah. that? Yeah, because okay. I think that's why they were invented, 
actually genitals. For malaria. Interesting. In India. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so that's why it's called fever tree, I think, because it comes mm-hmm. from the whatever tree it is that I think it. I think that's the name of the tree. Interesting. Right? Or or it's. Mm-hmm. Or that's what you get from that tree, anyway. Right, right. It's one. Of, it either makes fevers go away or causes. Fevers. I'm not no, no, sure. No, I meant. Either way, maybe stay away from the tree. Yeah. But anyhow, um, but I like the fever tree tonic because it's uh, just kind of crisp and fresh. It's not overly sweet. Some tonic waters are like Canada Dry or something. It just seems mm-hmm. too sweet to me. Yeah, yeah. But um, but I just like I, I like that. Uh, it's just more tonicky flavor, I guess. <laughs> well, how fun is that? That's cool. What would you add? You know, so for a hundred years, my go-to was like Captain and Coke. I just always went with something simple because if I got too weird, um, you know, you'd go to the, like some of the clubs I went to, they just didn't have top shelf stuff. I mean, mm. that's the crowd I run in. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm back training again. And so not drinking a ton, but I'll, you know, I'll just have a beer every now and then, uh, still enjoy a, a cocktail. But what I'll do typically is, um, you know, find out whatever the special, you know, the special, excuse me, yeah. the special tea, not the special, you know, if there's something, um, that, that really, you know, they, they take pride in, they, mm. they really enjoy, then I'll try that. Um, mm-hmm. I, when I you can this, go to a bar, that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going back in time because, remember, last year didn't happen. We're oh, back right. in 2019. <laughs> I was in Flagstaff, yeah. and they brought um, they brought a drink out where the glass was over cinnamon bark that was burning. So it was smoking. Mm, mm. So the glass was being smoked as they, as they brought it out. And then they, you know, you turn it over, and they pour the drink in. And the drink had, you know, different kinds of rum and these um, – candied cherries at the bottom of it and it was it was just such a a delightful presentation and a cool experience and it was a a yummy drink in that too but um you know i do i do miss those places so Mm. please come back wear masks so we can all do things again soon so sorry i'm off my soapbox vivek what's your drink (laughs) Mine is a blue moon. Uh, so yeah, that that's probably what I'm gonna grab right now after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, got, I got one more blue. meeting and then, then we're doing, <laughs> and then we're opening a bottle. So blue moon, yeah. it's a pale ale, right? Yeah. I, yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a, isn't, a, yes. isn't it sort of a wit beer? Yeah. A I know nothing about uh, beers. Yeah. Belgian, yeah, yeah Belgian pale mm-hmm. ale, yeah. I think mm-hmm. Sandy's the beer aficionado. Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah. yeah, beer. I especially enjoy craft beer, but I thought when you said drink, I was thinking spirits. And so spirits, uh, it's gin and tonic. Otherwise, yeah. it's craft beer. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm new to right. beer. So, uh, so Sandy, um, uh, if people want to follow your whatever you're doing currently, uh, where do they follow you? Uh, best place is Twitter, really. Uh, so Sandy U on Twitter. That's where I'm most active. I guess I would say. <laughs> And okay. and I usually retweet lightning tools and light and lightning stuff, so that's then you can find me there too. <laughs> nice. How about you, Ed? How are you working? Yep. Yeah, so uh, on Twitter, powered by Ed G, is uh, the best place to find tech related stuff. Um, same handle on Instagram, but that's all pictures of the grandkid and aviation and kittens. So uh, maybe just do the Twitter stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about your latest podcast? So, okay, thanks for the plug. Um, new <laughs> podcast that I'm doing with Ashley Rogers. Uh, it's called Insert Home. And uh, the whole point of this that one is to get every, we're going to have different people on each time and, and talk about their story into tech. Um, you know, a lot of folks have the impression, especially if they're sitting outside the tech universe, that, uh, you know, a lot, that we are all born and bred for this and we all mm-hmm. dream of sitting behind a keyboard since we were little. And oftentimes that's not the case, right? And so getting to know the person and their individual stories opens doors for people and and lets people know outside of tech that this is a welcoming place and um, there's room for you here no matter where you're at. And if you have aspirations of being in the industry, we'll we'll help you out. And along with that, you know, we'll chat about some social issues and, and things like that, obstacles that people encounter and and things everybody can do to make uh, the industry a little bit better. Oh, nice. 
Thanks. Yeah, I'm looking after forward course. to it. I think uh, you just released your first one, so uh, yep, first episode right after this one. Oh, thanks. Yeah. All the all the usual channels except Apple. Sorry, I'm learning, <laughs> but but uh, it's out there on Spotify and some other places. But it's called Insert nice. Home. Hmm. Cool. Yes. All right. Thank you for listening to us today. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on anchor.fm slash rapid power. Uh, it's available on all the podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts. Including Apple. <laughs> yeah, you're better than me. Like we, we already established that. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.